On air. And we're on air. We're on air. Can't take me to it. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. It is Friday, May the 31st, and this is Android Coliseum's Friday Night Hangout. Thanks for joining us. How weird is it that this is the 31st Hangout we've done, and we're doing it on May 31st? Are you doing That's this cool. again, Ryan? Did you say that yes. about the 26th? <laughs> I did say it's the 26th. Did you read my notes or something? We did have it th on the 26th. It was the 26th, and I think that that's about the only two that we've had that sort of lineup. But I mean, there's no way we can have a 30 second anymore, or a, there's no more, you know, 30 seconds or 30. This is the last kind of coincidence we can do this on. So, with that sort of superstition in place, the 31st and the 31st, we we kind of lost uh, Mike Wallace, who was going to be joining us tonight. So hopefully he can jump back in. We always love to have a guest on the show to talk uh, and provide their experience because it's not just us we're not the experts you know android is nothing but a group of enthusiasts so let's uh welcome the enthusiasts who are here in the panel today let's take a look here we have tom gray go ahead and say hello hello <laughs> so representing vancouver tom gray so thanks for hanging out and hope you have fun for sure all right, uh, myself, Ryan Moore here in Thunder Bay. We had some great Thunder Bay weather where it was awesome outside and then rain and then stop raining, and it's awesome again, and it's going to be raining probably pretty shortly. Uh, Thunder Bay, like I think most of Canada, we have the rule of if you don't like the weather, you just wait a couple minutes. So that's me. And we also have Cass Morrison with us. Hello. I'm in small town, Alberta. <laughs> so cryptic. <laughs> well, <laughs> I no, never know how to pronounce it. Or I'm in Canada's only border city. That's our claim to fame. Everybody's going out right now to Google that. What is Canada's only border city? It's okay. True. Okay, so let's take a look here, guys. Android Coliseum 31. We already we've been giving out the agenda so we can take a look at what topics we're going to be going about to do, and uh, so ready to jump into it. So like I said, Android 31 on the 31st. We did have three people and one of them dropped out. That Tom just wrote is that's three and one. Three and one has its America everywhere. Okay, so let's see topics we want to chat about today. So we did sort of hear, and we we're talking about this in the pre-show that LG is not making the Nexus, the next Nexus. Right, you know, there, there were people saying that possibly there are. There obviously were, uh, but the article I've been hearing was no, they're not making it, but they wouldn't be close to the idea if they would. Cass, you said you heard read an article today that said they were guaranteed they were doing it or something. Well, I did read one that said that they were, like I just sort of glanced over it. Like I went golfing, I came home, and then I was here, so I didn't have much time to really. Yeah look at it, but yeah, it seemed to indicate LG was doing the Nexus 5. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. I mean, we get to these kind of areas where people are just kind of rumor milling it up, right? You know, everybody's talking about oh, it's all conjecture and whatnot. It's hard to sort of try to make heads or tails of really what's going on when you have no official statement. Tom, your, your take? Uh, my take is I think the days of the next Nexus are over. And the reason why I say that is, you know, Cast has the S4, and they're releasing a Google version of the S4. I have the HTC One, and they're releasing a Google version of the HTC One. So I think everyone's kind of going to give you the Nexus feel if you want it. So I think the days of next Nexus, no, I think there's going to be multiple Nexuses per year now. It may not be branded Nexus per se, but it's going to be your Google phone. You know, and that's that's something we talked about. I think like a year, a couple of years ago, we did say, "Oh, you know what? People are, there's the rumor people talking about multiple Nexus devices per year." But maybe this is what they meant. They meant a Google Nexus user experience is the new N U E they're talking about Nexus user experience on their devices. Now, and I do want to say that they had who was it? Sundar Pinchai went on that uh, All Things D, and we'll talk about All Things D a little bit. He did make the comment that the Nexus program is not going to be abandoned. Now, does that mean they're still going to be making devices? Well, he didn't really say that, but he said the Nexus program is not abandoned. So my take on that is that he's, they're still going to be having a device, and they'll call that device the Nexus. Now, however, 
other devices will get a Nexus user experience. Uh, and, you know, whether that's a, a valid thing or not. Like, for example, Cass, you, were, you wouldn't want to get the S4 Nexus user experience version. No. <laughs> right? <laughs> not really. But I can see them wanting to make sure that people that want it can get it because, man, all you ever see online is that. And by going to that API, like they were saying, they're going to the API thing where they can update apps and include that as your u new user experience. I think that you're right. There isn't really going to be as much need for a Nexus phone, except for developers, which is who their target market is supposed to be. Yeah. And like we, we've talked about forever and a day, we've talked about the Nexus or, or an Android in general. One of the things we keep saying is that Android is anything but about choice. So being able to have a device in multiple options is is only going to be for the better for the community, right? Because there are going to be people like me. I like to have a Nexus experience, but you know, maybe I want the better device, the better camera, or you know, a little yeah. snappier processor. So that's why I look at an S4 net user experience or the HTC One. And we'll talk about that one in a few minutes. So they're not again take this a grain of salt. They are not, or maybe they are making the next Nexus, but they did release a white Nexus Four. Woo! White. <laughs> I, I just have shades of people who are all all in a, a, a flutter about the, you know, the iPhone four and who is it going to get in white? Is it going to be in white? I want to know if it's going to be in white. And now it's out. It's in white. It's for who, the iPhone users. Yeah. Who cares? Really, all it is is just that it's the backing of the uh, Nexus S four will be in white. The front, the front bezels are still going to be black. So I don't know. I mean, maybe if this was white, that'd be kind of cool. Um, I don't know. So I was thinking about that when I did this week's poll, and I asked everybody sort of, this week's poll, what is your take? Do you, does the color of your phone matter? And I, I, this comes from a couple of things as well, where I was looking at selling my Galaxy S3, and it's, it, was a, it was blue, a pebble blue or whatever the color they called it. And a friend of mine was going to buy it, and he thought, oh, you know, but you know what? I really wanted black, and they just released black. <laughs> so I really wanted black, so he's going to go buy it brand new, whereas the one I had was babied and well cheaper than brand new. But no, he didn't, he didn't buy it for me. And, and we're hearing, like, there's now people are all aflutter about, oh, there's going to be a red and a blue HTC One. Tom, would you have cared if your HTC One came in blue or red? I actually prefer it did not come in blue or red. I'm um, more of the conservative user. I want black, white, or in this case, silver. I made, I made this comment on a Google Plus post earlier, is each phone has their generic look. Nexus looked awesome in black. That's why black was its primary color. HTC, I never thought I owned a silver phone, but HTC looked beautiful. What I want the HTC in black? No, because silver looks amazing. So, I mean, I, I think they are what they are, and they look amazing the way they are. If you want to change the color, buy a case. Exactly. <laughs> right? Cass, what color did you get of your S4? A black. You got it in black? Yep. Okay. Now, did you have the option to get in different colors? Uh, a black or, or they, white. They, black or white? Did you yeah, did it matter? Did it matter? I want black. <laughs> <laughs> I did pre-order, and I pre-ordered black. Okay. I thought about it later, and no. <laughs> <laughs> but did it? But did it really matter that you get it in black or not? Like, if you went to the store and they said, "I'm sorry, we're all out right now. We have it in white." Would you take the white one? Uh, um. <laughs> actually, at the point that I got it, I probably would have because. I really was having problems with my Nexus. It was driving me crazy rebooting and stuff like that. So yeah, if they had said, look, the only thing we got is in white, I would have gotten white and learned to live with it. Yeah. But since I had like a Tom choice. Said. Like Tom says, I mean, if you don't like it in that color, get a, get a case for it. Cover well, up. I have... Uh, I get Deckle skins. Girl. Deckle Girl. So... Uh, the color matters, but mostly I just want i want that black front is what I want. Yeah, and I think most of the phones, that's what it is. It's just, it's the back plate, 
that comes yeah. in. Like, I remember back in the days, I don't know if you guys remember the Nokia 252, this is way back when, that it was, a, it was one of the first digital Nokia phones, and mm-hmm. you could pop the faceplate off it yeah. and get, like, chrome color or a fancy yellow. And you'd, all, all the shops started appearing that would sell the fancy accessories for them. And it was like, why? But whatever, right? It's out there. It's available. Yeah. And they so, sell a lot. <laughs> So the options I had for people to ask, I said, it doesn't matter at all. It matters a little. It matter, you know, but I can put a case on it. It matters some, or it definitely matters. And if it's not in stock, I just don't buy. And I had, you know, an other. Somebody wrote, as long as it isn't white. Is that you, Cass? No, that wasn't me. <laughs> so let's, and, and I look at... Mike. I look at the stats. <laughs> no, Mike wrote a different color choice. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, doesn't matter at all. Actually, it's about even, to be honest with you. It's almost a perfect four-way split. 26% doesn't matter at all. 29% matters a little, but I'll put a case on it if it's really bad, like it comes in like purple or something. Uh, matters some is 20%. Definitely matters is 23%. I, I thought this was going to go quite a different way. I thought people were going to like, I don't care. I got a phone. That's what matters to me. For See, a guy like me. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't use cases. So for me, I'm going to want to like how it looks. And that's something else we talked about before was, do you like to put a case on it, right? And, and the, the preferred choice here was naked. So, and I'm the same way. I, I'm using the, the bumper case because I still get to see Nexus and the flickly looking back. Right, but I get some protection out of it that if it does drop on its side, right, so I'm okay there. But if I if I wanted a certain device, so let's say I eventually do decide to go pick up the HTC One and I go down to the store and they have it in the metallic gray, the blue, and the red, and all they have left is red. I I don't want red, but you know what? I want the phone. It's not a deal breaker for me. I'm gonna, I'll pick it up and I'll maybe I'll get a case. Maybe I'll get one of those special deco color back thingies. And, Put it up because like, you can you can customize the phone in any way you want that way, right? That's just my take. But don't you? I think you have to. I think part of it is the visual appeal. Like like Tom said, he really likes how his phone looks, and I think one of the things I don't like about the HTC is the color. Where and I mean, but that's just me. That's a personal personal yeah. preference. But if you walk in a store and and you're not drawn to the way it looks, and the color is part of the way it looks, then, you know, that's going to... I think people are a lot more affected than they say they are. Okay, no, that's true. That, and, that, and it clearly is, it shows in the results. I mean, you know, a nearly four-way split there, right? Like, you know, 20 to 23, 26% on that. So, uh, cool. All right, so if you haven't had a chance... You guys can throw your answer into that poll, and we can, well, I'll do the tallies up on the Monday there. Okay, so other things that went down this week. Um, Google app updates. You know, so they talked about the Google I.O., that there's going to be a new sort of way the systems roll out. And we've known this for a long time. A new service comes out, like Google Maps, right? You can opt in and try to add, be part of the beta program or this new Gmail uh folder looking thing you can it's going to roll out slowly but surely but you may not get it for a while we knew that but what's happening apparently within the play store is that apps are updating or getting an update but it's and it's reflecting it in the in the app store but it's you actually don't have it for example so this week we had uh, Google Calendar and Google Play Music update and actually Google Play Store updated as well and I didn't get that I had a slide load that but I was like, oh, this would be really cool. I want to see this new Google Calendar. And I went on to the Play Store, and I clicked on Calendar, and it said no update, right? It just said open or not. I'm like, oh, okay, it's not up, not out for me yet. But then when you look at it, it shows updated date May 26th or May 28th or whatever the date was. I'm like, oh, that's, that's the day it's supposed to be updated, but I don't have that update. You look at the pictures in there. So there's nothing in there telling you you don't have this. Everything that you would look at would make you think that I do have this new update, but you don't. And this is my big problem is that, you know what, I get a rollout system. I understand that you can't 
give everybody instant access to it. Uh, they're Google. I don't know why they can't. They should be able to figure it out. But the fact that it doesn't show that you don't have it. I would even like it if they just said, update pending, please be patient, or next update will be this. Uh, because there's a lot of people who aren't as you know, tech savvy who might assume that they have that update. I mean, this is they're all small, minor features. But if it's a big feature and they assume they have that feature, then you know they might run into some issues of people assuming that's what they have. There's nothing to say that to say that they don't have that, right? So, Tom, like you got it, I think you know a couple minutes before I did. Finally, it took about two or three days. Thoughts? Thoughts are I think it's it's half our fault too, though, because being the eager Android user, what does it matter if we have the update right now or three days from now? We just I want have it. it. Now. So I think it's partially our fault for just not being patient. You know, I mean, half the people out there would have the auto update feature on, and you know, like today, for example, look at the phone. Oh, cool! I got these new options. But we're, we scan the social media and go, "Oh my God, calendar? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it?" Right? I mean, that's our fault. So I think patience is what we need to learn. True, and I, and I can totally understand that point of view. That you know, because it is available, doesn't mean it. Sh you have to have it, right? Just because the Nexus 4 is now available in white doesn't mean I have to go and buy it the instant it's available. But we're Android users. We're a little more of the elite Android users. Ooh, there's Jelly Bean out. It's not out for my phone. Well, damn it, I'm going to go get XDA and I'm going to put Cyanogen Mod or something on it right now. I want that new Photosphere. I remember Photosphere you know, being <laughs> yeah. sort of announced and the, the, the APK came out. And everyone was like flashing into their phone to try it out. I'm like, hey, well, you know, it's it's still beta. It's not really meant for your phone. It's, you know, but who, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, and like Tom says, you know, now who cares about photospheres? So it's sort of passe, but it's new. We had to have it. And I get that. I get patient. What I don't get is why the system says we have it, or it's indicating that we have it when we don't. If we don't get part of the rollout, then you don't reflect it in the place. It's just it's as a courtesy for not trying to draw stress into my life. Because <laughs> I, you know, I would do that. I was working, and every once in a while, I'll be like, okay, back out of the screen, recheck calendar. <laughs> no update button, back out, re-enter. I'm going to reboot you, and we'll come back to you in a couple more minutes. Uh, I was waiting for that thing, and it, you know, came. It's like a pot, you know, a boil, boiling water. It doesn't boil while you watch it, right? So, oh well. Other cool things. Talk about uh, roll it out. I know Tom. You said you tried it. Oh, Tom, you had a comment quickly about thing. <laughs> uh, another thing I want, wanted to say before you uh, jumped on is one thing I didn't try, and I should have, is if we could have gone into our app settings and. There's usually a setting where it says like uh, remove updates or like you can actually mm -hmm. go back to stock and then go and download the update again manually. Would that have pushed the updated calendar and music to us if we uninstalled it and then reinstalled that app? That's one thing I didn't try and I'm thinking about it now going, damn, that probably would have worked. Yeah, somebody, no, I actually saw somebody post yeah, somebody. that saying that they did. They did try that it didn't work. Okay. Did you go into it and say yeah, uninstall updates? Did. And it didn't work. The other option was to try the check-in, right? Remember the old, the old mm -hmm. feature of check-in? And I got scared on, on check-in because what happened is it disconnected my, my phone from the Play Store for like three days. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, my phone could connect to it, but if I went to the Play Store to say, ooh, that's a cool app, I'm going to download it, it wouldn't see my phone on the web app. And it takes a while for it to sort of make sure that the connection's there. And so, you mm. know, when you go in the Play Store and you can see your devices... It wasn't listing my device if I did the, the check-in thing. You go and delete play services and then go back and recheck in and then restart or whatever. So I don't do that anymore. Uh, but I, I heard a couple people say they tried things and didn't work. It just We had to, as Tom said, be patient. So, oh well. Okay, so other so cool thing I said was roll it out. Uh, I tried it. It was a new... Okay, so those who are familiar with it, roll it out was a little... Google Chrome experiment. The idea being because they sort of unified your Google Chrome beta 28, version 28, and your Google Chrome beta on your device to be in the same sort of build, 
so that you can sort of do two things so that they're doing things at the same time with them. So what you can actually do is use your browser kind of like a Wii, and the game was like skee-ball. You uh, went to the same website, punched in a code on one of it, and so your phone, you could use your phone and then like a Wii remote, you know, play a game like skee-ball and play a game. I thought it was really cool. Go try it out because, I mean, you can't do that with somebody's, you know, iPhone. Uh, but uh, just to try it out and say it's cool. Tom, you tried it out and it lasted you all of... Uh, I didn't even get that far. I clicked <laughs> on it and it's like, oh, you have to go on your phone and do this. I was like, X. <laughs> Hell, hells no. <laughs> that sounds like work, friend. Uh, but again, it's a cool thing. And those of you who are developing, I mean, that's a cool thing to take a look at the, what Google Chrome can do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the sessions we had at that Android TO conference when they talked about was whether they develop native apps or web apps. And I think the, the line is getting blurred of which one works better. And I think that's why it was really cool to see Android, uh, the Google I.O. show a lot of web services rather than Android device stuff. So... Anyways, okay, on to more Google-ish things. We talked, we heard about an HTC One Nexus user experience. Now, there's a lot of hoopla going on about this, going, oh, thank God, finally. Uh, I think some of the best benefits out of this is the fact that it's going to have an AOSP-based ROM for it that those people like Tom, who have the Sense version, can do a little bit more sort of developing and finding the right ROM that works for them instead of sort of shooting in the dark. Uh, Tom, would you have bought the Nexus, eight, or sorry, the NUE version of the HTC One? Cass said no, we shouldn't for the S4. How about you for the HTC One? I would not, and the reason for that being is I have the Sense version. If I want an Android open source project version, I will just simply flash Sanjimon. I have, I will have the best of both worlds. I'm not limited to one. I can have one or the other. But a little fun fact on that: I was reading a couple articles. And they were saying that HTC and Google are kind of teaming up, and they're going to release an Android open source project ROM for Sense user HTCs. So um, if you don't have the Google version, you don't have to go out and trade up or buy that new phone. They will actually provide you the ROM to do it. So, nice. I mean, yeah, there's going to be some development in there. Yeah, you're going to have to use HTC's own you know, unlock your bootloader through their website, yada, 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 voting your warranty. But, I mean, it's there. It's available. Of course, developers on XDA are going to grab that. They're going to incorporate it. And then before you know it, I mean, we won't even need it, right? So I'm sure Cass's S4 will have similar features. I mean, she probably has more already. If she wants Stop Google, she'll flash Sanjimon. I mean, she's a smart girl. She'll figure it out. I would, but I'm not that... <sighs> I have to talk about a cool experience I had earlier this week, later on. But, um, yeah, I was, think, I was just wondering, Tom, they are going to include the boom? Boom sound, yes, they are boom talking sound about with that. It, but boom. they didn't say anything about the camera. Uh, no, they're not going to include the camera. Um, the ultra pixels are technically there but there is some software rendering behind it. So yeah, you will have the benefit of a really sharp, awesome camera, but it probably won't magnify light as efficient as the Sense version because it is some software behind it. Yeah, and that's something I was reading about today myself and I was trying to find out, because that's my big thing. I need the two things. I need, I need to make sure A, it's going to be available in Canada, and I can have the, the full benefit of the, H, the ultra pixels. So there was, uh, I think it was Android Police who reached out to HTC to get some advice and answers on it. And first off, they said it will have the quality of boom sound because it's mostly it's hardware. But he said there won't be a switch for it, right? Because there's nothing, there's no switch for it in 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 AOSP. However, I'm thinking that it's, it's going to miss out on the EQ setting. So it'd be like if you turned off boot beats on your HTC One, it still sounds really good, it just doesn't sound awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and the Ultra Pixels, it says, oh, it'll still take great pictures, but it may not do as good a little bit, like you said. There is some sort of extra, you know, software rendering that goes on within it. So we'll sort of see how that goes. And then I found out 
also as well is that, that the IR port will be disabled. Now it's not that it's turned off, it's just no part of AOSP has a sort of tie into that, so therefore there's no way to sort of, th unless now whether or not you could just go and download an, download an app and put it on yourself and it would tie into it no problem, or is it some part of the kernel that, that just isn't there, so who knows. And Tom, you're saying with Cyanogen, it didn't work whatsoever, right? No, the uh, the drivers and software are built into the Sense framework. So simply go and downloading an IR app, it will not work. It actually has no software behind it to make it functional, unless the guys at Cyanogen Mod can somehow port that software over from the Sense ROMs. I believe it's built into the framework, if I understand correctly. So no, it wouldn't work. I would I would think that's correct, Tom, because I'm looking at Peel because that's what comes on the tabs, and uh, yeah, it says Samsung powered by Peel, but it does say Samsung, so you know there, it's not an automatic hook into the IR um, part of your device. So interesting times, and again. Now, that it, again, we're going to have the opportunity to have options, which I think is really cool. We talked about Android being having options is, is, is its biggest strength. But because of that, we do have to make some sacrifices. So you go Sense, and you get all the great features. Some may want, and some may not. Or you go Nexus Experience, and you get you know some but not others. So it's it's you got to take which, which is your better thing. And that's why I'm really kind of hesitant right now in terms of going, Cass? Can I just talk about a really cool experience I had this week? Because Probably. it was really cool. I was uh, doing some safety training with a fellow from Korea. And he had a translator with him. And I used my phone to translate safety training for the elements that he really had to get like from me. And I, I used S Translate just because it's you know Samsung's Korean. And I thought they might have a better app. And it was pretty slick, I have to say, really slick. <laughs> and I also used the uh, optical reader, and I didn't realize that you think optical reader, yeah, whatever. But it would point at a word, and it would translate it into Korean on the screen. And like words that you can't explain, like themselves. It says, what's, themsel what's this word? It's themselves. How do you explain that to somebody, right? Like, it's a uh, pronoun. So and you just point. It was just really cool. I never thought that I would use my phone like that. And I think that if those apps had not been included, I probably would not have used my phone like that. So anyways, just a cool thing that happened this week. Really like fun. I said, like we talked about the fact <laughs> that it is different. I mean, it's, uh, it allows you to have the options, right? And again, some people love that feature, and uh, I, I look at many people who are new Android users that have no idea of the options that are available to them, but they know they can go out and get the Sa Samsung device. They see these commercials. It does everything for them. Well, then, great. I can just go ahead and get that everything device and not have to worry about it, not knowing that you could probably go out and get a bunch of extra uh, softwares after and apps that work for it. So. You can, but then you have to evaluate whether they work for what you're doing. You know, whereas this, you just turn it on. If it doesn't work, you're not expending a lot of time. I have dogs going crazy. I got dogs to the left of me and cats to the right. So that's an Android hangout for us. I'll be back now in a moment. <laughs> no problem. Uh, speaking of HTC and devices, again, I hate to be the bearer of rumors but we, we heard about this new HTC T6. This is this new 5.9 tablet. We know nothing about it right now except that it's a potential 5.9 device, 1080p. Oh, we actually got some stats in one of the articles here. 2.3 gigahertz quad-core processor, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage. 16? Yeah, you know it's what? a bit short considering, I mean, my uh, HTC One has 7 gigs locked away. I mean... Yeah, I mean, you get 32 out of an HTC One. Something bigger should pack more. It must have an expandable slot for micro SD. It has to. Well, it's yeah, but and that's what we talked about last week. Why didn't the HTC One have the SD slot? So this one, this one should, but it should be basically the same. It looks exactly like the HTC One, just that six-inch size, which 
would make for a pretty big device, mm. I think. So it'll be interesting to sort of say. Now, one of the other rumors they talked about was that it would come with key lime pie, but no. Yeah, again, who knows? It won't. Uh, It'll come with 4.2. Well, it depends. When is this device going to be even coming out? I mean, maybe this device comes out. Maybe uh, if who was telling me, we watched that article, the thing that posted out today um, was a, an ad, a Google release an ad, and I can't remember. One of the pictures of the phone so showed 423. And if you know Google, they like to troll everybody and say, okay, well, uh, when they released Gingerbread, the phone clock mm. said 2.230, you know, 2.3. You know, when Ice Cream Sandwich came out, it was 4 o'clock. You know, then it was 4.10, then it was 4.20. Then it, so they're saying, oh, 4.23, is that what the next gen, uh, Android device is going to be? Anyways, so who knows? Uh, speaking of devices that are sort of rumored, actually this one kind of came out at All Things D. We said, heard the Motorola X, the Moto X phone is coming out. Now, the big thing that was the winner over everybody there was the fact that this phone will be assembled and create or you know put together all in the U.S. Um, so it would be the Moto X, and there's no stats on it, but they talked about this thing having a multitude of different sensors. Now, when I was heard that, I'm like, you know, well, my phone has sensors now. It has an accelerometer. My phone knows if it's upside down or it's right side up, right? It knows if I, you know, I'm moving really fast and sort of calculate my position. It knows my I'm on the map. So what is this? Well, this one they started saying, well, it's going to be having, you know, it'll know when it's in your phone versus when it's in your hand. It'll know when it, you know, it's going certain speeds. and So uh, it'd be interesting to hear what they talk about this. Um, and, you know, maybe is it the next Nexus? I'm not sure it's going to be that whatsoever. Anyways, the last thing I wanted that we wanted to talk about today, um, and this is not really Android related, but again, for those of us in Canada who are on, you know, mobile phones, uh, the CRTC uh, is going to be dropping a new new code for wireless carriers on Monday. And this is something that came out of the roundtable discussions they had back uh, a few months ago, talking about how to make it more equitable for a wireless uh, user, which was stuff like caps on overage charges, um, you know, making sure that early termination fees don't go beyond the subsidy cost of the device. Uh, being very upfront when you get a device that, yes, the device does cost $600, $700, and the subsidy which we provide will bring it down to this. You are paying that subsidy off by this much dollars per month over that three-year term or whatever. So it would be very cool to sort of see that come out. So we'll see how it comes out and what kind of backlash it might have. Uh, the carriers would have until the January, I think it is they're saying, until it comes out. Again, we put a, lo a link in the agenda for you to take a look at. And that's the news and poor bits we've heard. Is there anything you guys wanted to add in before we jump on to the next section? No, we got it all, man. All right. All right, on to review section. This past week I finally did my review on the Galaxy Note 8. So that's up there in the blog if you want to take a look at it. Uh, short and the sweet of it, oh, it's a great little device. I actually really liked it. I was surprised I, I liked the TouchWiz device because, I mean, TouchWiz, I'm not a big fan of it. But what's really neat is that I didn't really notice it on my relaxation device. On my daily driver, I want this to be fast. I want this to be responsive. Whereas, you know, sitting back on the, you know, the chair, I can relax and, and go at my own pace and be very, you know, time lengthy with it. Plus, it finally works on the buttons. You know, you can use the actual stylus on the buttons. You couldn't do that in the Note 2. You couldn't do that in the Note 1. You can now do it on the Note 8. That's very cool. So, I don't Actually, know. Actually, yeah, I think the Cass, stylus works. One. Yeah, I went and got one when you didn't go, Note 8, bleh. It was it was on sale at uh, it was on sale at Future Shop on the May long weekend, so I went and picked one up, and uh, I think they've done something really cool with that stylus because I play draw something, and on my other devices the stylus doesn't work in draw something, but on my Note 8 it does, and it draws a thin line, like the stylus line, not not an emulation of the crappy Touching. iPhone stylus line. So, yeah, I think they, they did some fine-tuning with this one. Because it, it just works so much nicer. I, 
I, I took it to a couple of meetings and just really, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I need to know if this can be worked in a work environment. So I took it to some meetings and did sketches with it, like I would normally do at a, a staff meeting or whatever. And I would just, I was doodling and writing my own notes and stuff on it, and it actually worked very well. I mean, there's a couple points here or there that you just have to get used to how it works. So I was quite in, uh, in enjoying it, uh, and I still have it in my office right now. I'm still waiting for my Samsung contact to say, oh, send it back. It's, that's all wrapped up, ready to go, but he hasn't sent me anything, so maybe it's an early Christmas present. <laughs> I have to say I was surprised. I mean, on one hand, I suspected that it would be the just right size tablet for me, but I really am surprised at how just right it is. Like mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's small enough you can take it to meetings and pull it out and use it without feeling ostentatious. And people don't ask you if it's an iPad. You you're writing on it with a pen, so it's kind I of. I got asked if it was an iPad Mini. I they oh, asked me sorry. if it was an iPad Mini. I did not. But no, it is. It's a nice size because it's perfect. Although I found it running with it, like if I'm running across the street oh, well. to go to a meeting, or, because you have to hold it either like that, right? So either you're holding it like this, and it's I found it, I wasn't getting enough grip on it, or I have to hold it like this, like that, and I just found it just too wide for one hand. So I really had to make sure I was just holding it the, the right way, right? So, but, okay, you can go ahead and read my article in the blog this past week. Uh, we're still waiting for Cash to give her two weeks, sort of. She does a nice play with it for two weeks and gives her her feel on it, so she'll be probably putting that up soon. Um, okay. But if you have any questions about those who used it, go ahead and send us a message. Uh, I, I say it's a buy. At the four thirty, four hundred thirty dollars, I found it a little pricey. So I'd say wait for that sale for like the three ninety nine, you know, price point. It'd be perfect. It's perfect to the size. Yeah, I I agree. Like I and it's like thirty dollars isn't a lot. No. And I just come I on just, for thirty I, bucks. Bring it down. Anyway. Uh, other apps that or uh, reviews we did uh, this past week. I did an app review on Endomondo. It is my uh, tracking app for my biking. And you can do it for running. You can do it for cycling, uh, stationary bike, and a bunch of other little sports. And it, it tracks your stuff. And if you had a heart monitor, you can connect it to the heart monitor and watch your zone. It has a bunch of really cool stuff. Read the review in the blog. It's uh, if you do activities, you might want to check it out. It's a really good app. And Tom also did an article on an app called Floating Nof Notification. Was it called? Tom? Yes. Yeah. So he called so Floating Notification. So a very Halo-ish kind of idea to get your notifications without having to go to Paranoid Android. Although if you really want Halo, go get Paranoid Android. <laughs> that he says it right in right in the app when you, when you go down from XDA. It says if you want Halo, don't use this. Go to go to Paranoid Android because I will not talk to you if you have any problems. So, and that's the reviews of the past week. Uh, updates this past week, we had we saw the device, the Xperia S, get Jelly Bean. Um, for apps, we saw a bunch of apps, get, and I'm just going to blast through these. Paperland uh, Live Wallpaper got in buildings. Cool. Cass saw that and immediately downloaded it again and made sure she put <laughs> buildings on her, on her wallpaper. Uh, Chrome Beta got a neat new feature where you could it shows that you can save data. So if you wanted to say, okay, turn data compression on, and I think I'm at about 20 to 30 percent savings of data of using the browser. So those of you who do a lot of your data consumption via the browser, make sure you get Chrome Beta, turn on data compression, and you can save on your data usage, especially if you're keeping an eye on every megabyte and gig, right? The Play Store got updated. Anybody get the Play Store update themselves automatically, or they just you did like I did and just sideload it? Uh, I didn't get it yet. Uh, I don't think I've gotten it. New 4.1.0. I think all I had it was it's just more location aware kind of thing. I, I didn't really see what the difference was. Yeah, there was a bug on it uh, where it wouldn't get your, as you said, lo location based on where your phone was. So that's where the update fixes this minor issue. Other than that, there's really nothing new. Nothing new. Uh, the Google Calendar updated. Uh, the big feature there was that uh, you can change some of the themes and colors for some of the um, things, but also when you want to pick the date and time, there's a new date and time picker. Remember before you have to you'd spin the wheel for the month, and, you know, spin the wheel for the d date. Now it's this kind of uh, it's an actual calendar-looking thing you pick, and the time clock actually has a clock you pick from. 
So that's uh, Google Actually, Calendar. Sylvain, yeah. Sylvain said he's having problems adding stuff to Google Calendar. So. Yeah, I, I wonder if he's still having that, that issue. I, I, I was able to replicate it. Could it could have been his connection speed too. But he's also on AOKP too. Maybe that, that's an issue. It's, it's, it's some bug bumping up against that. Who knows? I don't and know. And he's on a Galaxy Nexus. Galaxy Nexus. Oh, Sylvain, oh, you have to get hey, a new uh, device. Having problems yeah. right now. I know a lot of Galaxy Nexus users, including member Matt Lee. He yeah. had the same thing. He was having so many problems with his Galaxy Nexus. It just seemed like in the same month, everybody loved their phone. All of a sudden, oh, it's just not working as good as it used to. I think 4.2.2 was a update too far for the Galaxy Nexus. I really do. Because I, I updated it, and it just went... Because 4.2 worked, but 4.2.1, I think, started the issues. No, 4.2.1 was perfect. The one that I got from Samsung, I never had a problem with that. It's when 4.2.2, like you said, oh, the latest is out. I really want it. So I just put Bixie, like yeah. just a Bixie one, which was just a straight... A Deodex one or whatever. Yeah. And ugh. Ugh. Slow. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Other apps updated. Uh, Google Play Music now allows you to delete music from the, the stream. And Twitter just got a new bit of a new UI. So it looks a little flatter, the little flat UI kind of look. Those of you that are using Twitter, um, go check it out. So a question. What do you Shoot. guys... Sorry I keep putting my hand up. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> you've been in, you've been in training sessions all week, haven't you? Yeah, and next week too. Um, what do you guys think of that flat icon look thing. Like, because it's, there's a lot of themes like that available, you know, for for Apex and for um, a lot of other launchers. And apparently that's what Apple's going to. Do you guys like that flat theme? It's really hard to say, because I mean, it all depends on what the rest of your phone looks like. Because the icons by themselves are ugly. But if you have a theme that they kind of go with, then I can kind of see yeah. how it would synergize together. But by themselves, no. Yeah. And again, yeah, Tom said it has to run as a theme, right? One of the things I would keep having in the back of my mind if I want to run an article about is, you, see, you guys ever seen that app called My Color Screen? There's a website as well. Great ideas, but like, and you talk to somebody there, and it's like, oh, that looks so awesome. I wish I could get that on my phone. Oh, yeah, well, I, I use this launcher, and then I added this special widget and that special widget and then this theme and then that theme. And then I went and did the, and it was like, I'm good. I'm okay with what That's I have. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good on it. So, yeah. I mean, I think everything's going that way. The flat UI, you know, remember Metro UI, everybody's looking for something like that. So, who knows. Uh, Tom, one last comment? Yeah, uh, speaking of themes, uh, I actually saw something really cool on the uh, Google Play Store. I saw Winterboard and Cydia. You guys remember what that is? No. Winterboard and Cydia is the modifying iPhone software. When you jailbreak, oh, Cydia. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. You jailbreak your iPhone, you get Cydia. When you want to theme your iPhone, you get Winterboard. And they're appearing on the App Store, and people are going, um, or I should say Google Play Store, and people are going, um, why are they here? And apparently they only work on, like, your Android Open King and that uh, Android Open Source Projects, uh, Sanja Mod, yada, yada, yada. But the iPhone jailbreaking stuff is starting to appear on the Android, and people are kind of scratching their heads. There's a couple of people who've tried it and it works, but only on the, the stock Google with you know theme chooser and stuff like that. A couple of people tried it on Sense ROMs and like on uh, my HTC and it wouldn't go. But it's kind of a curious little thought there. So check it out if you are if you're like me, like a tinker. Well, and that's the thing again. It may not be for me. You know, maybe I'm look. I'm just looking at it on the website right now. I'm like tiny white icons flow. I'm like. <laughs> It doesn't do anything for me, but that's not to say that somebody says is going to go. Wow, that's great! I love that style, because you know, again, you get a person who's a designer in there, like, oh, it works really well. 
one of the things I'm, I'm really wanting to try out is that you're going to try that UCCW, mm -hmm. the Ultra Customizable something widgets, mm -hmm. and they have a ton of themes you can apply to that widget. I'm like, oh, okay, well, there's a definite bunch of ones I want to try out. So, and again, by some in certain features it may not look so well, but you know, in combination with other things, it may look great. And this is where, if you really want it to be your device. You might have to put some elbow, you know, grease into it and actually go. Okay, well, if I really wanted to to do this, how can I adjust that? And it's not for the faint of heart, but anything worth doing is worth doing right and learning how to do it. You know, spending the time on it, right? So, but what's great is that Android we have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. With an iPhone, you have to go in jailbreak and do whatever, right? So. Okay, so that's all the sort of news and bits of stuff for everybody. We we should do an article or an app or uh, an Android Coliseum just on like theming and stuff like that. Though, so what is you know playing around with that? Anyways, <laughs> let's take a look here. So now we come to the very end of our show where we talk about the App Coliseum. And those of you who've never tuned in before, the App Coliseum. It's our time to sort of share the app that we're using right now that we're sort of entranced by that we think that you should give it a try as well because. What's the number? They said something like 470, how many, how many thousands and thousands and thousands of apps? I can't remember the number now. You can't, by all means, test every single one of them. So maybe you're missing a couple that might be really cool. So here's our chance to share with you what we think are really cool that you might want to try out. Now, what we do is we then share these links out there with everybody else to say, here's what we're doing. Tell us what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down, right? Do you like it? Plus one it, like it, reshare it, retweet it, whatever you do. And so we kind of keep track of it. And, you know, the uh, competitiveness, competitiveness in us all, we want to know who wins every week. And last week, uh, we had Cass, who showed off Clueful. Myself, I showed off Photoshop Touch. Sivan showed off Pixay Pro. And Tom showed off Textra. The winner is Tom with Textra. You know what? Tom makes two weeks in a row, guys. Oh. Something's up here. Tom paying off his friends and relatives to go in <laughs> down plus one of these apps and stuff. <laughs> All right. So, Tom, let's take a look at you one last week. So you lead off the app Coliseum this week. Okay. So I like taking videos of my new son now. He's one year old. And, of course, you got to capture those precious moments. So my app is going to be MX Player. And what MX Player is, is a simple video rendering app. Oh, it's a bit hard to see. And it has your own gallery and everything like that. So I'll jump into a video right now. So this is my son playing. And everything is all touch based. So if I'm on this side of the screen, I can go up and down. And I adjust the brightness just with the touch of my finger. This side will be volume. And then if I want to fast forward, simply go left or right. Instantly fast forwards, instantly rewinds, all with a touch. No more on-screen controls. You can bypass all that. It's all just very quick and easy. With The uh, reason why I love this is they also release multiple codec packs. So yeah. the days of converting your videos are virtually over. It doesn't matter if they're MP4s. AVIs, MPEGs, it doesn't matter. This guy will play it. So, I mean, you just throw them on your SD card or onto your storage on your phone and just go. You don't have to get, like, you know, easy creator or, or whatever and convert your videos. And um, in this app, you can design how many cores you want your phone to use. One, two, four. If you have an OptiCore, go eight. And you can even choose if you're going to go software or hardware rendering. So I mean, this app is amazing. Best of all, it's excuse me, it's free, ad supported, or you can get the pro version, which will remove the ads, but you don't get any extra functionality, which is awesome. So I mean, you can get it for free and have the whole app to yourself if you don't mind a little banner once in a while. So that is my app, MX Player, and if you're looking for a video player that plays everything, this is it. It don't cost you a cent. So check it out. And it's great too because it detects your device and it automatically downloads the player codecs that work best with your device. Mm -hmm. So it's a great app. 
Cool. I know, when you first said MX player, and I kind of remembered X, MX player a while ago. I thought, well, why not just use the regular standard player? But when you started showing off that I can adjust the volume on one side and the brightness on the other side without having those keys, that's cool. That's where it, se it separates itself from another player. And the codex. Because if you, use codex. The, if you use the stock player, for example, the stock player on my HTC One really only plays MP4s, and that's about it. It, won't, it plays some other variations, but not really. So, I mean, you're, you have to convert. So if I'm going to download something off the net, something legally, and I'm going to put it on my phone, and it's like it's an AVI or whatever, it's not going to play unless I convert it first. Well, with this app, it will. Just drop it on there and go. I mean, it saves you so much time. Cool. Samsung's, Samsung's native video player does have a lot more codecs included with it, so I didn't reinstall MX Player, but certainly on my Nexus, that was my video player of choice. Cool. All right, so that's Tom's MX Player. Uh, so if you guys like MX Player or think you want to try it out, give him a plus one, give him a like, give him a retweet. You know, show him some support. Maybe he'll win three weeks in a row. Or not. <laughs> okay. Oh, probably. It's a great app. <laughs> it's a good app. Okay, let's take a look. Here's the app I want to show up this week. I'll go next here. My app I want to show up this week is Super Stickman Golf 2. And I like Super Stickman Golf 1. It was really fun. I, I cooked a couple of my friends on band trips to play it because they're golf fans. And he's like, oh, I want to buy a tablet just to play this game. So I tried 2 out because I like number 1, but also because 2 uses the Google Play Center, uh, Play Services, the Game Services Center. So uh, I'll see if I can give a screen share here. And this is something actually my kid loves, and I'll have showing with my wife as well here. Um, so what we did is we started playing this game together, and I, you know, so we, uh, you can so you can play the game as normal, or you can get these, um, you know, only oh, won the match, so I can play these. And I get notifications when we play different games. Well, this is going to go weird on us. Okay, but uh, it's kind of cool. You can play a game with somebody else. You can play randomly. Um, and you can keep track of who's winning these turn-based games here. So there's my wife I just played. And I can watch her play the last hole. You know, I can see watch her play the hole that she played and see how she did, etc. So, and I find out I just won. I got two bucks for it. Yay. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. I mean, I... I we don't have to be head to head while we play, like while we're playing. Like it, it's sort of turn based, right? So I can be at work and I can play a hole and then throw it over to her. Whenever she gets a chance to play the game, she plays a, a, a couple holes and then throws it back to me, and I get a notification. Oh, it's your turn to play, so I play. And, it, and it's really cool. It just adds a different dimension to the game. Uh, I don't really play normally these kind of games, but it's kind of fun. My kid is really into it. It's like, oh, mom, did you play your? Did you play your hole yet? Because Daddy just got you know two under, so he's he's kind of excited for it. And I, anything I think gets my kid excited about uh, using Android, I think is really cool. So that's my app. It's called Stick Super Stickman Golf Two, and use the Google Plus Play uh, sent game stuff, and you can play with other people. It's really cool. Okay, that's my app. And Kath, let's hear yours. My app is Tetris Blitz. I spent a lot of time playing Tetris when I was uh, when it first came out in the 80s. I would spend my time, unfortunately, at work playing Tetris. This is a little different because you don't really plan stuff. You just see where it fits, and then tap it, and you can turn it and get points. The nice thing about this is it really is a two-minute round. So in two minutes, your game is done, and you get hooked into playing another game. <laughs> the thing I don't like about it is I'm not on Facebook. I know that's shocking, but and it is constantly nagging you to log in with Facebook. So that's the only thing I don't like about it. But other than that, it's free. It's a great time waster, and a lot of fun. So we have. 
We have two games this week mm-hmm. against Tom's other entertainment device. So a lot of entertainment this week in App Coliseum. So, again, if you guys like games, give us a plus one. If you like to watch TV shows and movies, you give Tom a plus one. <laughs> give us Security all a one. plus one. <laughs> Yeah, you can give us all a plus one. Just, you know, Tom did win two weeks in a row. Or <laughs> so. Make uh, it the trifecta of the month. <laughs> <laughs> or a hat trick. The hat trick. So, that's our show for the week, guys. Uh, I really uh, appreciate those who've tuned in and those who are going to probably watch this later on over the weekend when they get a chance to. Uh, what else can we really say? Sorry that Mike couldn't join. Mike, uh i got to check out his system. He's having some issues with that in general. I guess being a developer, you have to you know, do a lot of computer work, on it, and sometimes it doesn't work. So other than that, this ends the 31st Hangout being held on the 31st. Mm-hmm. So we'll see you guys next week. It'll be June the 30... It'll be the 32nd Hangout. It'll be what? June the 7th. It's so, my anniversary. Yeah. Hey! Hey, good job. Congratulations. So I mean you're gonna you're gonna bring Fred in here? <laughs> no. Fred gonna join you? No. 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 <laughs> okay. Well thanks everybody from here from Android Coliseum. I'll let everybody uh, do their sign off. Cass, go ahead. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Hope you're enjoying summer. If you're getting summer in that part of Canada. We are. Our trees are just waiting. As soon as it gets warm at all, all the leaves come out. And it's like they were never gone. It's We've awesome. got a ton of ton of water lately, and the grass is just blooming, and some of the trees are really starting to kind of blossom out. So it feels like summer, but it's really kind of late spring. So yeah, anyways. well, for us actually, I think we're only in the end five days behind. Like farmers are all, about five days behind on their crops, which is awesome considering the snow was here two weeks ago. Oh, yes. Snow. Mm-hmm. Let's not talk about that for another couple mm. months. All right. I'm Ryan from Android Coliseum here in Thunder Bay. It's going to be an awesome weekend. No rain, no rain, no rain. Uh, so <laughs> if it rains, I'll have more time to fan out inside with my Android devices. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next week. Tom? I'm Tom Gray. Thanks for joining us at Android Coliseum. Please remember to share our articles, comment on our posts. We need the help of our community to grow. The more we grow, the better we can serve you. So please, sharing is caring. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right, so thanks so much. And what game is April playing in the background, just so we all can know? I don't know. It's uh, Final Fantasy XI Online. Okay, I looked at the list. So that's what you're time. doing later. <laughs> and that's actually what she was asking me earlier, if I would join in and do some missions with her after the hangout. <laughs> I know you guys can see a white screen. Yeah, no worries. You can always play games. Okay, so thanks so much, everybody. We'll catch you next week. Don't forget, if you're watching this live, we will allow uh, the off-air portion. We're just going to be here having a uh, relaxed time, so I hope you guys join in. Catch you next week. Ciao.